Good evening. I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we have the roll, please? Alderman Rapella? Here. Alderman Nichols? Here. Alderman Taylor? Here. Alderman Sevenick? Here. Alderman Langdon? Here. Alderman Schmidt? Here. Alderman Tom Grady? Here. Alderman Ted Grady? Here. All are present. Thank you. The first item on the agenda this evening is a public hearing. It's about the proposed rezoning of 670 Airport Road. Director Schrader, would you give us a brief update on that? Certainly. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so uh, on the agenda today is to request to rezone 670 Airport Road from I-1 Heavy Industrial to I-2 General Industrial. Um, so currently within this property, uh, it's, it's one larger property uh, located on Airport Road. There's two mini storage facilities or self-storage facilities and then one um, one larger warehouse facility. Um, so the, the new owner did come to us and w wanted to sell off uh, or subdivide, split those lots um, because they're, they're kind of two different uses um, in that sense. So what we have is a, uh, is a request to uh, basically uh, split those into two separate lots. However, they would not meet the minimum, uh, minimum acreage or the minimum uh, width for an I-2 zoning district or an I-1 zoning district, excuse me. Um, so the proposal is basically to rezone to I-2 to allow that certified survey map to split those lots. Um, there is a CSM on the agenda a little bit later under the Plan Commission consent items, um, and that is contingent, again, upon the approval of this rezoning. With that, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this matter? Seeing no one, we'll call the public hearing to a close, and we'll move on to item two, which is the report of department heads staff and consultants. We do have Kip Golden here this evening to give us an update on the, we did have Kip, oh there he is, <laughs> to give us an update on the Bryn, Bryn and Bonta projects. Kip Golden, uh, Chair, oh, hold on. Uh, representative for the Bryn project and uh, Bonta. Um, when Sam requested this last week, I didn't have great news. I was still in the dark a little bit about uh, uh, everything right now that's delays is all around the environmental um, contamination that's, uh, that was on the Bryn and the perceived stuff that was on Bonta. Uh, I'm happy to say last Wednesday we did get sign off from the uh, bank's consultant, um, third party consultant that uh, we're good to go on the Bryn. So uh, we're gearing up on that one. Uh, we should be closing here yet this week. Uh, to, uh, but we're, uh, we're gearing up to, uh, um, uh, we've, uh, the long lead item on that one is a rebar. Uh, we're probably out four weeks on rebar. Um, so we'll be starting digging out there in the next two, three weeks. So uh, that one will be rocking and rolling. Um, they did request us to do another 16 tests on the inside of Banta, um, even though we've done millions of, no, not millions, but we've done a ton of tests in there and haven't found really anything. But uh, they're being very conservative. Um, Good or bad. Uh, anyways, uh, we did get all those tests back last week. Uh, we're using Westwood on that one. Um, and all those tests came back good. So that was submitted to the bank and consultant last Friday uh, in hopes to hear something this week that we can uh, get the Bonta project rocking and closed as well. Um, we are uh, obviously doing the asbestos abatement over there um, and some select demolition uh, at this point. Um, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to hearing the next couple of weeks here to close on both of them, get them rocking and rolling. So um, it's been frustrating. I know it's been frustrating for all of you. It's certainly been frustrating for all of us. Um, and uh, but we're, we, and the worst thing is our plan that we had before is this, you know, when we all sat here and, and split the difference on the contamination, the plan hasn't changed. It's the same plan, um, but now I finally have approval from the bank. So um, we'll be closing on that. And, and again, Bonta, we, there's, there's literally nothing there. So, um, but, so I'll certainly take any questions if anybody has anybody or has any or um, otherwise we're, uh, we're looking forward and uh, you should be seeing something in the next month, uh, rocking and rolling on hopefully both. Alderman Taylor. Yep. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Kip, on the Bonta property on the east side, is there any way we could clean up that facade a little bit uh, instead of letting that, uh, uh, you know, it looks so, it's an interior wall that's exposed now, and it looks pretty pretty rough to the public. Yeah, it's all getting basically demoed out of there, so um, 
to, to demo it out of there and put something up, it'd be pretty hard. Um, okay. It's gonna honestly, it's gonna look like that for I mean until we start doing okay. the construction. There's nothing we really can do at this point. All right, thank you. Alderman Rapella. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So Kip, uh, you said to, it'll be like three weeks off because of ordering rebar. Yes. So when we had the groundbreaking in February, mm -hmm. or whatever, you didn't have the rebar ordered then anyway. Well, you I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. Well, yeah, I couldn't order. Yeah, I don't want to order stuff if I don't have the money to pay for it. Oh. So, yeah, <laughs> that would suck. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I, I don't want to be ordering. I know. Again, we did take a plunge and obviously uh, demoed some stuff. Uh, we kind of went as far as we were willing to go until we got the financing done. Okay. Um, now, again, none of us envisioned it was going to take three months for them to give me the green light. And sure. again, it's been. Uh, extremely frustrating on all of us. Um, the plan we had back then is the same plan we have now. So nothing's changed, even though we did all additional tests. Um, I think there we had to do another eight borings. Um, I don't know how many different samples. Um, um, uh, I mean, one good thing is we found out that uh, basically the perk that's in the water um, basically must have came in with the fill. Um, there's some foundry sand there, which we knew. Um, again, all the fill from that site is leaving the site. Um, so we're going to be cleaning it up. Uh, again, that's the plan that we all agreed to split. Um, so we're, we're ready to rock. Uh, the big thing is uh, we need to rebar because obviously we don't want to open up that hole before we uh, are ready to pour the foundations. Understood. Thank so, you. Yeah. Just continue cutting the grass at the yes, grid in the bottom. Yes, it'll be, it'll be yes. done. Yes. Alderman Nichols. the last time. Alderman Nichols. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Mm -hmm. I was the one who contacted Sam and said, can we awesome. have an update? Because both of them sit in District 1. Yes. So I get a lot of uh, good. I calls and, and um, questions about this. And so I'm going to be hopeful that by Labor Day, I'm going to give you a few more weeks here. Uh, we'll yeah. have some time. And to yes. be clear, yeah. the, the rebar is not on order because the bank loan hasn't come through yet, Correct. right? Okay. Right. We haven't closed on the bank loan. But we did order it now because I was really just waiting for Sigma uh, because, again, I, this, this process, they're basically, they have all the control. So yep. I have no control. And the banks rely, even though we have our own engineers, they're relying on their engineer. Um, and uh, as soon as their engineer gave us the green light, we're good to go. Yeah. And Everything else is in place. Yeah. When you said you didn't have any money, I didn't want people to think no, that. No, yeah, I, I wanted to clear that up for you. <laughs> um, and just state yes. my yeah. frustration. I'm sure I know you're extremely frustrated with the Bonta building, but to think that the redevelopment authority spent a lot of money making sure doing environmental assessments and making sure that yeah. everything was ready to go and then to think that that your group has to go through it all again and then some is there's been more phase really ones and phase twos and twos and a halves and threes and fours almost so yeah it's it's been a frustrating process we look forward to seeing uh big activity as do in i the coming weeks thank you thank you environmental groups don't make any money unless they keep doing it um uh, that's <laughs> I'll keep them all shut. We want them to. I still have one more to get them to approve. <laughs> Alderman Grady. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Kip, question f about the Bryn. Yeah. Now that the timeline is changing and everything, when do you anticipate not starting but completing the project? Yeah, is it still the same time frame that you originally had? Well, it's not. I mean, the end date was more the probably September. I, uh, I think it's September of next year is probably when we'll uh, um, be looking at completion. Okay, thank so. you. Well, great. Thanks for coming tonight. And no we look problem. forward to seeing activity. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Item two is the minutes and communications. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll. Move that we receive minutes A through F and communications G through J. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second by Alderman Schmidt. Any questions? Alderman Taylor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on a report of uh, department head officers, I asked uh, the police chief last week about uh, the fireworks uh, complaints this year. And I'll just read the first paragraph for the public. Uh, from June 1st through July 8th, we responded to 52 fireworks calls. This is down from 89 fireworks calls last year and just under our five-year average of 60 calls. I know my calls were up this year, and uh, not before, but uh, 
maybe a day or two before, and uh, people noticed uh, people had very large fireworks this year, very large displays, and it was kind of concerning to them. So I appreciate the, the Chief Steika's uh, uh, follow-up on the fireworks complaint, and uh, also last week on a report of department head officers, I had asked uh, Sam for a report on 540 Broad Street. I know you're busy right now. You might have been on vacation, so maybe next uh, next I meeting we can get that report that on 540 we, Broad Street. And I had told. And Dr. I would Schrader like to have one on um, 109 Racine Street, and another one on. 408 Second Street, which is uh, the Bertrand Dental Lab. The council took action on landscaping last fall. And if we could have a diagram on what we can expect out there. And uh, so those three properties next meeting. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. It's fine. I'll talk to him after the meeting. Right. Item F is public comments on any matter of concern to the city. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak this evening? Just go up to the microphone and... If anybody feels better that I put this on, I will. You're fine either way. That's up okay. to you. Uh, I don't know if my five minutes started. I wanted to thank the council, the mayor, all elected officials, they have stock in the city of Menasha. I've been here almost 40 years in Menasha, and you seem to be doing your job as well. Fire, I don't know if fire and police commission are here, but they're right up on my list too. Appointed officials, they, they got a question mark, and they know who they are. Anyways, my subject tonight is safety, protect and, and serve. Uh, the young lady that I'm re representing, more or less, is working probably for the city of Menasha because she sold over probably two dozen to three dozen properties in Menasha. She likes Menasha, and after renting five years, she's bought the house she's renting. Anyways, uh, I'm not familiar with the easement policy. And on your boulevard, you're expected to cut it. But if that uh, Japanese flowering, Japanese spine tree dies, the city comes out removes it, asks the landowner if he wants another one. If so, they plant it. If not, they don't. The easement in the right-of-way for utilities, power and telephone, there, there's either a four or six foot easement, I don't know which it is, but there is a 60 foot widow maker in that easement. I've talked to Aspinwall, I've talked to the, the city, uh, the utilities, well, we can't touch it. We can't touch it unless it's laying on the power, laying on the telephone. If this tree comes down, it's going to take her entire house, her garage, possibly the neighbors, and un, you know, un, I hope not, she gets into her car that morning and that tree comes down, uh, that's it. But there's enough widow makers on the top of this to make the whole village of Greenville a village of widows. And I behoove any of the aldermen, it's at 705 Carver Lane. And, I and there's nothing close to it that a, a tree jockey without a 90-foot boom could touch because there's nothing solid to hold on to. But it could come down any time. In my 30 years of utility work, I've talked to your people on uh, the power company and stuff and say, well, we can't touch it because it's private property. But if they had, would happen to drop a transformer off one of those bolts to a garage roof, they're still liable. But 99% of those linemen don't want to go up there in the storm. This is what happens. When the storm blows it down, we remove the tree off the lines, we fix the lines, and then it's up to... But in my 30-some years of working for AT&T, only once, but all it takes is once, one block west, west of... Richmond and a block and a half north of Wisconsin. I was called on a problem, lines down, go fix them. A tree had fallen in a backyard. By this time, the hole was patched, everything, 
And after I got the telephone line back up, I went through the house to check all the jacks. The upstairs bedroom that that occupant used, here the queen size bed had a five to six inch hole through the center of that bed. Luckily enough, he worked night shift. Now, I'm not one for movies, but back to the future, do we want this to happen again? Like I said, in 30 plus years, I saw it once. But all it takes is once and protect and serve. I don't feel that she should be, in fact, the tree is actually more on the Kinsey Court address. The power line's right in the middle of the easement. It's more on the Kinsey Court, but it leans her way. But it could take her house, her garage, her car, possibly 707 and possibly 703. And I just feel that with Aspinwall or the tree trimmers you have, uh, or the 90 foot ladder truck that the fire department, let's pretend there's a cat up there and just keep on cutting off a piece so he can't go up that high any longer. But uh, I do ask for something to be done. I'd like a reply. My name's William Malm. I live at 704 Carver Lane. So I'm kind of on, if I was in two districts, I'd be one on Take One, I'd be one on Carver Lane. But Mr. Langdon did come over, Mr. Taylor did come over, Mr. Langdon did take pictures, and I don't know if, if he has shared them with him, but he does have pictures of it, and I don't think you'd want to sleep through the night in a storm knowing that that was, and maybe your children, and if you're not children and people friendly, what if her dog Reese was in that upstairs bedroom? And a beautiful golden retriever. I'm her, I'm her adopted grandfather. But uh, I asked for something to be looked at, and in your busy mornings or afternoons or whatever, just take a ride past 704 and look at that tree and see if you'd want that looming over your head. So that's all I've got to say, and I, I thank the council for, and like I said, you'll probably see me again because I, I got three, nick, three nicknames. One's Bilbo because I look like a hobbit, my kids say. One is Wally because I have no neck like a walrus. And the other one, hey, I wouldn't, I wouldn't relish, I'd relish the thought of being called Ralphie because uh, I don't think Ralph Nader was the worst person in the world, and he was a, you know, for justice, for groups and cities towns, counties. So anyways, I thank the council for listening to me and I would appreciate any kind of rebuttal, you know, and if there, is there any questions by any of you? Sure, what, what we'll do is we'll send our arborist out there to take a look at it and we'll determine if it's a dangerous tree and mm -hmm. we'll get back to you, okay? Okay, there is no, I, I know when Aspenwall comes in there and they say if they're six inches away from the power or whatever, they trim it off, but this is, a tree 60 feet tall. There are no limbs that are six inches away from the power, but if it goes, it's gonna take sure. possibly three mm -hmm. residences and maybe life. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look and we'll get back with you, okay? Okay, and uh, 704 Carver Lane, phone okay. number 725-3337, and I do have a recorder on it. Okay, sounds okay? great. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you, Council. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Tim Jacobson, 955 Plank Road. Maybe for the last time. But I did say I would come in person when you guys got back into the house and uh, thank you for all your efforts on the public works facility. And man of my word, I'm here to do that tonight. Um, that mission started back in 1993, and what you have now is a true asset for our community, and uh, something that you all can be proud of, and all the department heads and all, even Thad, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for all your efforts and your endeavors your, and everything you've done. It's truly an asset for the community. Uh, spent 40 years working out of the old one and took a couple of tours through the new one and it's definitely a dream come true. Um, the other thing that I have questions for tonight, it, uh, and I don't want to throw a wet blanket on everybody, but 
<clears throat> reading about and listening to and watching a lot of discussions, uh, mostly nationally, about reparations for slavery and how some communities have already stepped forward and started trying to uh, pay them. And I think before, and I figured this was a place to start with my questions as the local government, but before Menasha would start to uh, move in that direction, uh, questions I have is, uh, in Wisconsin, when Congress opened up the territory that included Wisconsin up for uh, settlement, one of their first rules was no slavery. So Wisconsin never had slavery. Um, but they did send many thousands of men and tons of material and supplies to put an end to slavery. And uh, if we're going to be forced to pay reparations for slavery, my question is, uh, on the flip side of that coin, can the taxpayers of Wisconsin send an invoice for their losses for that endeavor? And the other thing, um, you'd be doing an injustice if this council and the mayor didn't use every inch of their authority to make sure critical race theory, the uh, 1619 project, and things like that do not make it into our schools or our community as a whole. Uh, some of these efforts are being done to divide this country and I tell you what, the Civil War was brutal. We all know that. But you go back to the Revolutionary War when the country was divided between patriots and loyalists and read some of the letters and diaries and books about that and you'll see what viciousness really was. And the only people that want that are bloodthirsty animals. We're here as Americans. We have one flag and we need to get this stuff settled and work forward on projects like we just got done for Public Works in all our community. Uh, I know we, got, we have a mixed race block where I live, and I tell all the kids, watch out for cars every time they're out playing. And it doesn't matter who or what they are. That's what America is. So. If there's anything that I've unspoken that is wrong, I would like my alderman or anybody from the administration to correct me. But um, as a council and administration for our community, watch where you're going and watch who comes after you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else this evening? Sandra DeBille Taylor, 545 Broad Street. Um, first, I will ask again, I asked several weeks ago, for the amount of funds that the city will be receiving from the federal government under the American Rescue, um, I believe you receive some now and you'll be receiving some in the future, and I think it behooves the public to know and the council to know and have a community discussion on what to do with those one-time only funds. Then, with my time remaining, I'm going to try to discuss two TIF amendments that are on your packet tonight. Um, I'll start with TIF 11. Uh, the TIF is scheduled to close in 2034. For the people in the, in the public that aren't familiar, that was created for the Gilbert Paper Mill site to demo it and set it for redevelopment. It's been demoed. Very little has happened since that time. Uh, there has been an office building built and efforts to uh, improve a warehouse. But other than that, not much. Currently, from what I have read, that TIF is in the red. And projections, according to what I have read, were that the closure, it will be in the red $54,000. However, at the joint review board meeting, they recalculated and it might be positive $50,000 if all goes well. What you are amending tonight is, in addition to the Gilbert site, adding the Bonta site. Currently, the Bonta site is valued at $0. So, going forward, the school district, the county, the technical college, and the city will gain nothing 
until the closure of that TIF off of that project. The city will get the increment. Furthermore, the project, there is no project other than infrastructure because the current developer of the Bonta site has yet to ask the city for subsidy. So this is all going toward Menashe Utilities for a project that they didn't finish, but they went to the PSC to have our rates increased to finish their work for underground utilities for the Racine Street Bridge. It's for telephone poles, sewer, water, and extending Oak Street. It's not a project. It's not jobs. So to me, it's not worthy of having this added on. And the school district, if I believe right, they'll actually be losing about $10 million. At the plan commission, there was a public hearing and not one member of the plan commission asked a question. That's why I'm here tonight. I will ask the questions. And as Alderman Sevenick mentioned earlier, I'll just be devil's advocate. Um, I know that I know you will vote for it because I know you want that Bonta property and the Gilbert site redeveloped, but we're not gaining anything by adding this territory. It's all things that should be done on the tax levy and not buried in to the TIF. And as in stated in uh, Sam's memo, it said, if the boundaries of, of the district are expanded, the city will be able to capitalize and use the increment from the Bonta site to bring the existing district out of the red. That's why you want to do this. Then on to TIF 13. TIF 13 is downtown. Um, if I recall, this is to be closed in 2042. This was established for the office tower and the parking lot. What you're looking at doing is tonight entering into a development agreement for developers to take the beautiful building next to the waterfront bridge and convert that former office building into apartments, no jobs. It's not creating a corporate headquarters. It's not drawing people into Menasha. It's not a hotel or a banquet facility, waterfront restaurant. It's none of those things that will attract people to the downtown. It's an apartment. And I don't know who's gonna live in a downtown with no jobs. <laughs> And again, what we are looking to do with this is use the increment to beef up the historic buildings and other buildings in the downtown that people have owned for decades and didn't want to stick a dime into them. But now we can use city taxpayer dollars to do that. Let's remodel all those buildings. Oh, their upstairs isn't being used. Let's make apartments all on the city tax dollar. Most of those buildings are used as write-offs on their taxes. And that does say nothing to those businesses that have invested heavily in the downtown with their own money. It's, to me, it's a slap in the face that we're going to then turn around and hand out money to others that really don't care. And that's what we're doing with that money. We're going to um, give developers money to convert an existing office building into apartments. Yet, at the previous meeting, the owner of 140 Main, who is not getting any TIF assistance, was basically harassed because he hasn't been able to convert his building into apartments yet. It's hypocritical to ask one to do it without any TIF assistance and then hand over millions of dollars to another. We're over six minutes at this point. Thank you. I figured you'd cut me off. Have a good evening. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? No? You look like you're ready to stand up, Kyle. Yes or no? Okay. <laughs> okay, seeing no one else, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Or... 
Mr. Stephan, you want to hold over some items is your question. So I'd like to hold over items two, three, and four. Okay. Would you care to make a motion for the other two then? Okay, with that, Mayor, at this time I'll move that we approve items one and five. One being the minutes of the Common Council, 7 6 of 21, and five, the Planning Commission's recommendation for the approval of the certified survey map at 670 Airport Road. There's a motion and a second. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carries 8-0. Item two is the administration committee recommendations. Do we have a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve as recommended by the administration committee the proposed service contract with Ellers and Associates for the consideration of analyzing the feasibility, developing the plan, and administering the approvals of a project plan and boundary amendment in tax increment district number 13 for fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. So there is the there's a motion and a second. Is there other discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Hold on, Mayor. Oh. Mark's uh, for some reason doesn't have a number. Thank you, Mayor. At the end of the motion, you said not to exceed then 15, right? Alderman uh, Nichols? 15,500. 500? Okay, thank you. Seeing no other questions, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Oh. You guys have to do this I don't before have we get three on my uh, agenda. Yeah, order. agenda. This is number two that we're working on right now. Randy, can you go grab James on the counter? I'll paraphrase him. There aren't any more. There aren't. We just don't have number three on the list. Don't say Shirley. This is item two, the proposed service contract with Ellers and Associates. Is everyone clear that we're on item two at this point? Yep, yep. And we're ready to vote at this point then? Yep, yep. Okay. 15-5. Motion carries 8-0. Okay, item three is a special board of public works item that we just spoke about before the meeting. Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to um, make a motion to accept the um, change order and for the payment to IE, IEI general contractors. That's contract unit number 2021-05, and that is for the public protection facility shower rooms at the uh, number station 35, um, uh, station 35 fire department, and then for the, um, the PD also. And that's an add-on of $9,985. Change order number two. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion, a second by Alderman Schmidt for the change order to IEI general contractors for the amount of $9,985. There's no O in here? <laughs> we, we just had to clarify that this is just the change order. There is no payment. He didn't get the rest of the council got it. <laughs> oh. Not getting the farm. <laughs> okay. That's normal language for you. Moving forward. Okay. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8 0. Thank you, Mayor. 
you are, everyone. My uh, computer is up here, thank you. I, item four is the Board of Public Works recommendation. All reminded. Thank you, Mayor. Make the motion to accept the payment and change order, final change order to Myron Construction Company, contract unit number 2020-06. That's for the Public Works Facility Construction Project and the amount of uh, $929.80. Payment number 16, like I said, and final. Second, Mayor. There's a motion and a second. So you came the right night, Tim. That last 900 bucks that we had, that building. We'll look for at least the 80 cents from you. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8 0. Item I is action items. The first is the accounts payable and payroll for July 2nd through 15th. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of July 2nd through July 15th, 2021, in the amount of $773,342.27. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Rapella. Is there any discussion? Seeing. No discussion? Well, you're going to have to vote. <laughs> if we could have a roll call vote, please. That never happens at your first, Randy. Yeah, be yeah. Oh. <laughs> Motion carries 8-0. Item 2 is the beverage operator's license applications. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve the beverage operator's license applications for the 2021 through 2023 licensing period as listed under approved in the clerk's memo dated July 19th, 2021. There's a motion and a second from Alderman Rapella. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8 0. Item 3 is the development agreement between the City of Menasha and Discovery Point Apartments, LLC. Do we have a motion? Alderman Schmidt. I'll make the motion to accept the development agreement between the City of Menasha and Discovery Point Apartments, LLC. For the property of 225 Main Street, parcel number 3-00900-00. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Nichols. Is there a discussion? Alderman Langdon. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. So, back in 2010, when I first became Alderman, um, it was discussed back then uh, about not wanting apartments anymore in the city. Menasha was known for apartment city, rental property. And tonight we'll be voting on more apartments. And we don't even have the Bryn built. We don't have Bonta built. We have nothing on Gilbert's site. And, and, and I, I, I know I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure we're going to want apartments over in the waiting mill. Now we're becoming apartment city again. So I just want to throw that out there. Thank you. Alderman Rapello. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I do know that it's targeted for apartments. Uh, I would much rather be pleased if... Uh, they were kind of uh, condos, uh, condos, at least those, the, the people who rent and co or own condos are uh, going to be more stable residents of Menasha. Uh, the more renters we have, they rent for two, three years, many of them, until their house is built or until they decide to move or change jobs. And I understand the reason for renters, um, but they, they're coming and going. 
and I, I guess we made a push even a few years back. We'd like to change two uh, uh, apartment houses or houses that are uh, two residences, change them back to one residence. So we just establish main housing. And now we're adding more apartments. Um, I wish we would do duplexes, uh, or I mean, not duplexes, I wish we would do condos instead and uh, promote living in Menasha for a longer term than just rental properties. And we do our, seem to be getting heavy on uh, rental apartment type properties. So, thank you. Alderman Taylor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, looking at this agreement, I didn't see any drawings about the uh, the balconies and and how that would look on this property. Uh, I certainly hope that the Planning Commission with the landmarks has done a great job in our downtown uh, making sure that things look right. I look at the Marina Place apartments and you've got a, a $70 fence between the apartments with a board and it just doesn't doesn't appeal uh, to the facade on that building. So I certainly hope that we can uh, uh, get a picture or uh, a drawing of what this may look like uh, in the future. Thank you. Alderman Grady. Thank you, Mayor. I understand where Alderman Langdon and Rappeller are coming from, but this is not in a different area. I mean, it's in a nice prime area on the water. And I think when they did come in and present their um, ideas and stuff to it, they weren't cheap. And they're kind of very nice apartments that they want to have. And I think with the amount of money they're looking to have for those apartments, I think these people plan on staying a little bit, little bit longer than a couple of years. And I think... Um, Menasha has just got to start getting active and doing some of this stuff. You look at Nina, they're making apartments. Appleton's apartment, 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 apartment. I mean, let's go, Menasha. We got a, uh, we got property on r real prime areas that they're that, that that will sell. So, I'm for this. Alderman Schmidt. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also agree. What we have to do is look outside the box that we've always been living in and what Menasha has always had. I've been parts of different of a different community and have been part of a lot of these different discussions that have been happening on the trends and the way th trends are changing. The upcoming millennials and the younger generation are not buying homes like the people from my generation bought homes. They are they want to be a little bit more transient. They want to be able to move around. They want to be close to downtown. They want to be close to trails. They want to be close to major highways. They want to be able to bike. They want to do all these things. This is also the generation that is working from home right now. COVID pushed a lot of that into people working from home. There's no need to go to an office building anymore. And I disagree with the philosophy that more apartments don't bring people downtown. Those people living downtown will bring their bodies to the downtown. They do want the downtown. They do want the restaurants. They do want the shops. They want to stay local. And we have to break out of the bubble of this doesn't fit. It's, you have to look long term, not just five years down the road, 10 years. We have to look further down the road. And the trends are changing. And we need to change with them. Other communities are doing it. If we don't get on board with this, we will just be that little ghost town that everybody passes by and goes somewhere else. Thank you. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to back up a second and um, for the people listening and who will be watching this uh, meeting at a later date, Director Schrader, could you tell us a little bit more about this project and what is being presented this evening? Uh, certainly. So this is the uh, uh, 225 Main Street. Uh, so this is located uh, the former or the original Bonta corporate headquarters uh, in our downtown. Uh, we were approached uh, earlier this spring, this summer, uh, about looking to convert this building, this existing or 
formerly office building uh, into 26 market rate um, plus uh, units. Uh, so basically what we're looking at is uh, they did look at their financials um, and but for TIF incentive would not be able to, to finance this project. Um, so we are looking again that is uh, tying to the tax increment district number 13 um, and looking at um, really recreating that downtown and, and filling bodies into our downtown. Um, you talk a lot about uh, downtowns, the healthy downtowns are 24-7 are downtowns. Um, and that's oftentimes what you get from residential development downtown is those individuals downtown all the time to support um, the businesses uh, that are also there. So a bit of a chicken and the egg thing, but we do, uh, uh, again, we uh, feel strongly with this, uh, with this developer. We have uh, past, uh, as I think Alderman Taylor had mentioned, uh, past uh, work with this developer for development and investment group. They are currently constructing the Lakeshore Ridge Apartments um, on the far east side of our community. Um, so again, we, we feel strongly with this development and this developer. Thank you. And I do see some representatives from the development group in the gallery this evening. Um, would it be all right to hear from them? I don't know if they wanted to speak, but if they would like to speak, they definitely could. Paul, did you want to say anything? No. But, but I do need you to come up to the microphone if you're going to say something. Good yes, evening, I'm everyone. With that, I'll ask for unanimous consent to hear from, what was your name? Paul Clister. And your, your address? N8597, Fire Lane 9, Menasha. Um, I, I, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to um, people here and to the community to tell us a little bit more about who you are, your experience in, um, your general experience in the Fox Valley, um, and what you're looking to do for that building. So I am, <clears throat> I'm actually a, a principal in Commercial Horizon. So Commercial Horizon is a very active development organization based in Appleton and Green Bay. Um, daily you drive by probably 50 different developments that we've done. So, I mean, close to Menasha, we did the Festival of Foods deal. Um, around the east side of Appleton, everything around the Home Depot, the Spectrum building, Festival of Foods, um, west side of Appleton. There's a, there's a, I mean, the whole Catalpa building project that was there. I could go on and on. So if you look at our website at commercialrises.com, you'll see I mean, we just finished the United Health Building, office building in De Pere, 175,000 square foot office building. We're finishing up 150,000 square feet uh, with the Packers at Titletown. Um, so there, it, there's a lot of it. So this, this venture is separate from Commercial Horizon. So I have three sons that are, that we, we've created a new company called Four Investments. It's family owned real estate. And it's, it's my, me and my three boys. Um, we've been extremely active in the last few years. So downtown Appleton, we did Gabriel Lofts, uh, we did Avant Apartments, uh, we've done some apartments mid-state, and have a bunch of other ones in the hopper. So we have a strong foundation of doing deals, working with communities, um, working with local builders, contractors, um, working with your staff has been terrific thus far. So we're excited about it. And, and working with John Bergstrom, you know, this is a building it's a tremendous businessman, right? I mean, if, they, if that building could fill with another corporate headquarters or another office user, it'd be full by now. I mean, there's nobody on the planet that can create jobs in the downtown like John can. So John, I consider a very dear friend, um, and I'm trying to help him out as well as Menasha, looking at the highest and best use for that facility and getting some increment out of it. Um, you know, we own the, the X Plexus building out on 41 in Breezewood. Look at that. That's, I mean, it's a beautiful building. 120,000 square feet, and we have an 18% full with very little activity. I mean, that, that's the way of the world right now, whether we like, like it or not. That's what office is going to be. So we're looking at to be creative in some of these other avenues to try and make something out of something that might sit there mothballed for a really long time. It's obviously a beautiful spot along the water. All of the other apartments, I, th I think our sons have done a phenomenal job as far as looking at the market analysis. And, and there were some great comments tonight about what the new generation is looking for. Where do people want to live? And Gabriel Lawson and Avant were filled up within three months. Um, so, you know, it's our goal to fill this up. It's going to be beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful building. It's got great bones right now. And, you know, I, I think you'll be very pleased with the addition it makes it downtown. 
Thank you. I really felt it was important for people to know that you're local and established and have vast experience in both the commercial end of things and now the residential side of things. And as far as um, who your clientele is, so who are, um, help us understand who your niche is for that building. Who are you marketing to? So interesting enough, even, even downtown Appleton, like in Gabriel's and Avant, we're seeing a, a, a a smattering of different people, professionals, younger students. Um, you know, we have some Lawrence students down there. What I anticipate here is probably going to be, might be guys like me that want to get the hell out of their house and <laughs> live in a smaller space and not have to take care of, uh, you know, a lot of big rooms. So we're seeing an older generation, but we're also seeing, you know, as mentioned, some people that are working at home that want to be closer to amenities that they can walk to. Um, but it's, it's, it's no, you know, where Lake, Lakeshore Ridge, I think we're going to see maybe a little older demographic, uh, but down here I think you're gonna see a, a little bit of everything. Okay, and do you have any idea yet if you'll be have um, a studio, one, two, or any three bedroom apartments? So or? we're in we're in concept design right now, okay. so it's, it's gonna be mostly one and two bedroom apartments. All right, thank you for taking a few questions and for being here this you're evening. You're welcome, thank you. Hold on a minute. Well, Alderman Sevenick is next, and Paul, I just wanted to comment, for the people who haven't been out to see Lakeshore Ridge, it's coming along beautifully. The detailing on that building is spectacular. So if you haven't been out there yet, take a look at the type of buildings that they're developing, as well as Avant and... Absolutely. And um, <laughs> the Gabriel building. Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think everybody here, uh, whether their comments were positive or not as positive um, are good points. That's our job up here to do these, uh, this type of questioning. Um, now, my personal opinion. Number one, we have a building that sits empty again in our downtown. It's a blighted building, basically, and that's what TIFs are designed mostly for, to take care of blight. And as far as issues of jobs, it may not create permanent jobs, but it will create a, and retain a number of jobs in, in the construction industry, which is very important. Here we have an empty building. We should be honored the fact that this developer, who's already shown their reputation throughout the valley, has become a good partner with the city of Menasha, and I hope that continues. We're gonna take a building that has a value of 1.7 million and possibly turn it into a four million, well, it will have to be a, a four million plus dollar building as, far, as part of the TIF. So I support this development and I would ask that all of us here tonight uh, show their support. And I think this is the first domino that'll, that'll drop uh, for downtown Menasha and uh, I see this spurring on a lot more positive uh, situations for our entire community, not just the downtown. I appreciate uh, your commitment to Menasha. And I was just wondering about, is there any control measures for, uh, you see buildings in cities where people have flags hanging off the balconies or different window treatments and things. I mean, do we have a uniform look for this building? Under your, do you have covenants or anything with your building? So you better ask your folks here on staff on what, I mean, I mean, really, I mean, that's, that's more of a local ordinance issue. But as far as us, we absolutely have very strong rules and regulations for our tenants. We don't take any crap. I mean, th th these will be well policed, well taken care of, well respected between the tenants. So yes, I mean, we, we take that very, very seriously. So you do have those control measures in the rental agreements? Exactly. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Clister, again, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, what would be your, I know you mentioned that there are one and two, uh, two uh, bed apartments, that type of thing. Uh, what is your price point that you're getting? I, I'm also the alderman out there by Lake Park, so I have seen that, and it's uh, a nice building, and I... I will take a tour before it opens up. You're absolutely more than welcome. And as far as, I mean, appreciate where we are in this process right now, right? I mean, we're just, this, this is the beginning. 
We have not, I mean, we, we are in concept review. This, bill, this project doesn't happen unless this TIF district gets expanded and this development agreement happens. So we have done preliminary budgeting, we haven't done marketing, we haven't done any of that, but everything's gonna happen very quickly. So if all of this comes through in October, I mean, our goal is then to start focusing on construction drawings and we wanna be doing demo come January. So by then I'll be able to tell you what everything's gonna cost. But so they're gonna be market rate. I mean, again, our, our boys have done a very sensitive market analysis of every single apartment complex amenities, what it has to offer, what it, you know, sure. what the price points are. We're not going to be here. It's not going to be here, but it's going to be fair. Okay. Um, one last thing. Um, I know last time when they came with the, with the Lake Park uh, development, they had pictures. And obviously you said that you're not even to that point yet where you can show the design of the, the, the future building. Um, so we're kind of, we're kind of okaying this without with trusting you, I guess, without... You still uh, have a lot of control. I mean, I, if there's something I learned 25 years ago when I started this, the worst thing I can do is show you a picture. Okay. And then and then underperform. I mean, that's okay. idiotic. To me, to me is to do the Well, we're hoping you overperform, but okay. Well, yeah. I hope my reputation <laughs> yeah. says I usually yeah. do. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So this will go through Plan Commission, probably Landmarks Commission, I'm guessing, yeah. too, probably? I'm guessing it might be, but maybe. But it'll at least go through plan commission, so there will be review of the design. Okay. Thanks for coming tonight, Paul. You're welcome. I appreciate Thank it. you all very much. Seeing no further discussion, I think we had a motion a second a while back, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. Item four is a donation request from the Fox Valley Labor Council. Alderman Sevener. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll make a motion that we make the uh, annual donation of, uh, what, what was the dollar amount, 300? 250. $250. Oh yeah, there it is. $250 donation um, from the city of Menasha to the uh, 38th annual Labor Fest celebration. Second. So motion and a second. And the reason this is on there is just so you and the public know there will not be a Labor Day parade this year. And they are asking still for the support for the Labor Festival. Any discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. Item K is ordinances and resolutions. The first is ordinance five. Do we have a motion? Alderman Schmidt. Um, yes, I'd like to introduce ordinance 0-5-21 in ordinance amending title 13 by making certain changes to the district at 670 Airport Road, parcel number 4-00798-00 from um, I-1 Heavy Industrial to I-2 General Industrial District. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Tom Grady. Is there any discussion? No? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. Item two is resolution 32. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve resolution 32, a resolution approving an amendment to the project plan and boundary of tax incremental district number 11. Is there a second? There's a motion, a second by Alderman Tom Grady. Is there a discussion? Alderman Sevenick. This is where I offer the amendment. Mm -hmm. um, we're, uh, there was something that was left out in our C CIP budget. Uh, we want to continue the trail along the Gilberts to go behind the cent uh, Stad Miller's property and Coakley's property so we can finally have a loop through the downtown. So I'd like to make a motion 
and this will be in this, this is already put in the CIP budget, I'd like to make a motion to amend the project plan to add the Gilbert Extension Trail, extending the existing trail out to Washington Street as a proposed phase three project located within the outside the district in the amount of 200K and reduce the Lawson Canal engineering and consultant design within phase three to 50K. There's a motion and a second for the amendment. Is there a discussion on the amendment? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I did notice uh, upon looking through the plan that that segment of where that trail would be is not included within the map, the boundaries of the new district. So could you address that, Director Schrader? Yeah, certainly. Um, so we do allow, uh, well, half of the trail would be within the existing district. Um, so the warehouse that Alderman Sevenick had mentioned is within the district, um, but the the C. Coakley parking lot is not within the district. Um, so with this motion today, um, we have talked with Ellers and Associates, uh, who I believe is here sitting around the corner, um, about this project plan amendment and how that would fit into the project plan. Um, we would have to add some detail within the project plan uh, in certain areas, including projects outside the district. So we would define that uh, specifically there with this motion, and that would be approved with a final plan draft in front of the uh, uh, joint review board uh, in the coming month. Thank you. Alderman Grady. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I don't know who can answer this question, but the reduction to the Lawson Canal engineering, f what was it first set at? The, do we know that number? I, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, so uh, what we had under phase one was 250000 and then phase two was another 250000 um, what we're looking at with this TIF is, uh, again, worst case scenario numbers. Um, what we've kind of been looking at with some of the other grants that we've been looking at is we need to get a little bit more design done before we can really, they'll, they'll entertain our, our, uh, our grant dollars. So what we're looking at doing is, is using some of this, this increment off this Bonta site and this, this new TIF to, to push that a little bit dish, additional design as well as move that project forward in hopes that we can go and circle back around and, and look for that, uh, those other grant dollars for the Lost Canal project. And you're comfortable with this? Do you want to answer that, Mike? I, I'm comfortable with this. Um, we had kind of this dis discussion um, regarding uh, you know, where we're at with the project, again, we weren't anticipating any of these upfront engineering costs right. because we have, we already applied for the DNR stewardship grant. We're, we're trying to do those mechanisms that we don't get too far down in design without the funding source to do the project. Um, so we do feel like this can get us that step further um, and really start to look at, okay, those grant dollars and how to tie this whole project together. There will be, um, obviously, um, needs to, to fill those gaps, um, and we will be strategically looking at those. Because, again, this wasn't originally the plan to, to put all of this engineering into TIF 11 for this project, but we are looking, again, at, at the worst-case scenario um, to keep, the options open. Um, the budget amount will still be on an annual budget amount set by the Common Council. So again, just because we're putting these dollars into the project plan does not mean uh, city staff or the administration is outspending them. Okay. Thank you, Director Schrader. Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote on the amendment, which is up on the screen. Motion carries 8-0. So now we have the motion as amended on the floor, which is the resolution approving the amendment to TIF 11 with the amendment that Alderman Sevenick just spoke about. Alderman Taylor? Uh, uh, Director, um, was there any uh, grant money as far as uh, with the electrical end of the uh, the utilities uh, being incorporated in this project uh, by the Menasha Utilities at all? Uh, that, so that's a Menasha Utilities project. Uh, I guess on that aspect, I, I won't have those details at this time. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. 
Director Schrader, in looking over the um, proposed projects within the TIF plan, uh, it is very heavy on borrowing at this point. So are there ways in which those funds can be, um, the number, the dollars borrowed can be decreased? Are we looking into that? Um, for a lot of these projects, we are still looking at, at grant dollars of how we can associate those grant dollars. Um, but we do uh, anticipate, again, from an infrastructure standpoint, uh, you know, it was noted a lot of these TIF districts are created through a project, and then we have additional increment or funds at the end to, to do these projects, to put those in. What we're looking at this project is actually to put in the infrastructure that would assist in those future developments. Um, so that's why the Oak Street uh, side of things is, is in there in those discussions where that's going to create and open up additional development sites. We're always, again, looking for, for grant dollars, again, with like the Lost Canal um, and other things. I know the ARPA funds were mentioned earlier. I, I know there's been a lot of conversations internally uh, about what to bring forward um, uh, from that aspect. So those conversations are ongoing, yes. Any borrowing that would be done for projects within the TIF would be paid using increment. That correct? is correct. Um, so I believe, uh, and perhaps Jennifer uh, can note this, but I believe the borrowing within a TIF does not go against our geo debt limit, correct? It does. I uh, mistaken that. So um, is there any, I guess, Yes, but it would, we're conservatively looking at the increment coming in um, and that we have the increment coming in to pay down that, that debt that we are borrowing. Okay, thank you for um, clarifying that. And then one last very general question. The purpose of TIF as established under law uh, in the state of Wisconsin, can you just talk a little bit about that? I certainly could, but we do have uh, an individual that drove all the way up uh, with Ellerzet, if there's anonymous consent, could uh, touch base on that general question. Jonathan, would you be willing to speak on that? In easy to understand terms. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Switching gears, TIF 101. Uh, <laughs> Sure, the, the concept is to give local governments some control over how and where and when uh, economic development takes place uh, and also uh, to provide a tool uh, to help to spur economic development uh, and that's the increment. Um, it is essentially a tax capture uh, concept. It's used in all 50 states um, with the exception I think of Arizona. And, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, a widely used uh, uh, tool and concept uh, that allows, again, for some control uh, uh, over how cities uh, and villages develop. And that can be, the financial component of that can be used for um, financing public infrastructure projects as well as um, economic development or incentive Incentive, incentives yeah. mm -hmm. yes and and um, you know obviously Wisconsin has a, a number of statutes that govern the the uh, application of TIF and um, so doing doing everything on but you know under those statutes uh, provides some uh, level of transparency and accountability for how how those those decisions are made um, but I, I would just add that you know anecdotally throughout the state there's um, you know continual pressure on uh, the capital stacks for how projects are financed and uh, developers are always looking for um, different ways that can uh, they can uh, they can close those gaps and uh, and TIF has become the very popular way to do that um, so as long as it's done in a way that meets statute, uh, as long as uh, you know you all still have control over how those decisions are made and, and how those funds are allocated, then um, you know it seems like a very beneficial program. Thank you. 
Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 7 1. Item 3 is Resolution 33. Do we have a motion? Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll make the motion for the uh, R 33 21, and that's for the uh, authorizing of the borrowing from WPPI Energy. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second from Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Is this in the amount of $141,131? Yes. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. This is the solar array that is being placed on the new public works facility. Um, the reason we're borrowing from WPPI Energy versus just borrowing like we normally would is WPPI has a 0% interest loan program that can be utilized by member communities. I believe it's up to a half million dollars. Does that sound right, Jennifer? And we've used this in the past on our LED street lighting and a few other projects as well. So this is a Really good deal for communities that are WPPI members. And, and we are one of their largest members. Yes. Okay, moving on to item four is resolution 34. And Director Hutter, if you would mind, wouldn't mind sharing with us a little bit about this before we put a motion forward. Sure, thanks, Mayor. Um, so this is a resolution to cease the public health emergency in the city of Menasha. Um, we are bringing this forward to the council right now due to the situation that we are currently seeing in the city of Menasha as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so I have just a few talking points here to go over with you that um, in January of 2021, um, our city had a very high burden, our case rate of COVID-19 cases. Um, that translates to us seeing over 100 cases in a two-week period. Um, and now about six months later, we're seeing, uh, we have a moderate burden and we're seeing about three to four cases in a um, two-week period. And that's been sustained for the last five weeks or so. Um, the Fox Valley region currently has a moderate burden of cases as well. And the number of hospitalized patients has decreased significantly since the beginning of this year. And nearly 50% of city of Menasha residents have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, we do want to point out that there is still some concern over um, the transmissibility, especially of the Delta variant that is currently spreading. Um, it is more contagious than other virus strains um, and there's still a lot that's unknown about it. Um, However, we know that if we continue to take mitigation strategies um, seriously for both vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals, um, we can overcome that and hopefully prevent seeing a spike in cases in the city of Menasha. Um, so just wanted to reiterate that vaccination is the best tool that we have. Um, there are three vaccines currently authorized in the United States and they're all very safe and highly effective. Um, and about 99% of the people in the United States who have died from COVID-19 in the past few months um, have all been unvaccinated. Um, so that tells you that the people who are unvaccinated are at highest risk of COVID-19. And um, I also would like to mention that there's a lot of myths circulating around um, about the COVID-19 vaccines. So you know, we really strongly encourage everyone to get their information from reliable sources. Uh, I would recommend going first to the CDC website or the Wisconsin DHS website for, um, again, reliable information and um, fact-based, evidence-based information about those vaccines. So um, back to the resolution. <laughs> At this point in time, 
we feel that this is an appropriate measure that we can take. Um, I believe the mayor would agree with me that if we were to see things dramatically turn around and change, that we might have other action to take. And our next vaccination clinics are this oh, week, as well as there's one for yes. back to school too. Yes, we do have a vaccination clinic this week. The information is on our website. Um, and then we also have one on Tuesday, July 27th, um, that we're holding in conjunction with the um, Menasha Joint School District. It's registration help time that where um, families can come to city center to receive help for their um, child's school registration. So we'll be holding a vaccine clinic all day that day. You're welcome to call the health department to schedule an appointment or just walk in. So with that, if anyone has questions or would like to make a motion, we'd be able to do that at this point. All right, everyone all at once still, please. <laughs> We're looking for a motion, sure. Alderman Langdon. Yeah, I'll make the uh, motion to accept uh, R-34-21 um, for the, se the session of the public health emergency in the city of Menasha, introduced by uh, Mayor Merkitz. I'll second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Ted Grady. Just looking to see who you're typing. Any discussion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you. Uh, originally, when we declared a public health emergency, there was funding tied to that. So the city was eligible to recover certain costs associated with COVID-19. Where do things with that stand today? Do you, do you want to answer that, Christine, or do you want me to? Um, I believe included in the packet was a memo from the state of Wisconsin um, that did state that funding does not hinge on whether the city has its own public health emergency declaration. Okay. I did see the memo, and to me it was a little, it was about as clear as mud <laughs> what, the, what was trying to be communicated in that memo. That would be the message. Oh, thank you. And um, Director Hutter, you mentioned that if the city were to cease the public health emergency and we suddenly saw a um, in sustained increase in cases that other actions could be um, used, could you talk a little bit more about what those might be? Sure, I think we could um, determine whether or not it would be appropriate to declare another emergency in our city. And, um, you know, speaking from the health department, our powers would really be focused on um, individual outbreaks um, and as it relates to responding to those, if we're talking um, intensive contact tracing or um, building closures, um, things like that, those would be those measures. Um, but on a citywide level, um, looking at declaring an emergency, should we feel that that is um, an appropriate action? Okay. And I just want to read from the resolution. It's the first, be it further resolved. Uh, for everyone, the Common Council encourages employees and residents to follow the most current CDC guidance for fully vaccinated people and the guidance for unvaccinated people. If you have not received your vaccination, be it further resolved that the Common Council recognizes that people are at different stages and comfort levels regarding public interactions following mandatory COVID-19 restrictions and ask that we be kind to one another, um, respecting people's choices regarding vaccination, face covering, and social distancing. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8-0. Item five is resolution 35. Do we have a motion? Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I came up with this idea and I asked um, Thad what 
uh, what he thought about it, and um, Mayor Merkus, uh, what he thought about it, and um, uh, I, they said they would help me with, with the resolution. Um, but I thought uh, this came to my mind that it would be kind of appropriate to uh, 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 do a, a resolution for Adam Alex. And so I'd like to make the uh, motion for the R-35-21, a resolution in appreciation for outstanding public service by Adam Alex, introduced by myself, Alderman Langdon. Second. There's a motion and a second. I am not sure who the second is. Any discussion? <laughs> I just uh, wanted to, uh, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, uh, also say that um, we uh, uh, didn't invite Adam tonight to see this resolution. We're hoping he does, doesn't because uh, we want to try to get him when uh, we put, uh, when Thad puts the plaque up over the conference room or next to it um, to uh, get Adam here somehow and um, have it uh, shown to him at that time. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carries 8 0. Item L is appointments. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sudner. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll move for your motion of Travis McDonald as the uh, Weed Control Commissioner uh, for a term of 7 1921 to 7 1922. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Sudner. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll also uh, like to make a motion of your reappointment of Larry Hazy to the Housing Authority for a term of 7121 to 7125. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Alderman Sevener. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll move for your appointments of Adam. Austin. Oh, excuse me. I had Adam on my mind. <laughs> Austin Hammond to the Housing Authority and also to the Sustainability Board for a term for the Housing Authority of 7121 to 7125. And I don't see the life sentence, okay, <laughs> for the Sustainability Board. There are no terms. Okay on the Sustainability Board because it's an ad hoc committee. Alderman Nichols. Mm -hmm. oh, is there a second first? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Alderman Nichols. Thank you. Um, does, I appreciate Mr. Hammond's interest in serving on both of these uh, committees. My question is, does he live in the city of Menasha? He does. Okay. He recently moved here. He is a recent graduate of UW Oshkosh and is, look, is very interested in sustainability and he works for the Habitat Restore. So he has some interest in housing as well. We've been having a difficult time getting a quorum for the Housing Authority. So this will help us maintain that quorum as well. Thank you. I always feel strongly it's important to have residents serving on our boards and commissions. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item N is public comments on any matter listed on the agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to comment? Go ahead. But you need to come back up to the microphone, please. I guess one of my comments uh, on the housing or the, the old Bonta building being changed into apartments. Um, I, I haven't watched Menasha do it. I've watched everything from a new apartment building by Frank's Pizza on College Avenue to down at Gabriel Furniture, uh, the old Post Crescent. And there's articles about people that live in a rural area. They, it's getting hard for them, so 
they tried to move, they talk about low income rentals. Well, up to now, the only thing I've seen in any of the newspaper or print or heard was the Post Crescent is gonna be the most reasonable and that's gonna be almost $800 a month and I don't know if it includes everything. There's parking below, but you have to pay for it. There's an air conditioner, but it's heat, water, all this. So these people that are selling their lifelong homes and looking for low income, uh, now you're going all the way to 1400 for a, a one bedroom, two bedroom. And this, to me, would be better off condos with amenities, a workout room, a hot tub, things like that. Now somebody's gonna invest it. There will be people, look at the, the apartments there by First Community. Aren't those all full? I believe they are. Anyways, let them purchase them. They'll stick on them, they'll watch the market and stuff, and if they want to move out, hey, and they make a dollar, they're going to sell it. But I, I don't feel that the rental, uh, the gentleman said, until he gets some more, I, I'm not trying to disc the, the idea, but until he gets more, I think he left, until he gets more information, I think what you asked about what's the price range. Well, after all the said and done and all the commissions and everybody looks at it and if it's got ammonia in the ground or whatever the case may be, uh, then is it maybe a little too late? So I, I, I think almost that the condos, I mean, we've got rentals. They're high. I mean, a, a three-bedroom, you're going to get, I got a three-bedroom by my house, $1,100 a month. No, I mean, but if somebody's looking to get into an area and they like the downtown, they maybe like the weather vane and Parker Johns and the whole ball of wax. They like, they got the view of the river, the slip, the, you know, now they have a roundabout to look at, but that's not, not my fault. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think the, uh, I think the idea of the condos for sale is a lot better than a rental. And like I said, as far as he goes, how far he has to go to get you a price range. But if any of you has watched the, what's happened in Appleton, I mean, here's this couple of newspaper articles says, hey, we sold our lifelong home. We want to get closer to the kids, closer to things, hospitals, doctors, shopping, things like that. And there, there is the $700 all of a sudden turns into twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. You might as well get the penthouse down there in, uh, on Law Street up at the top. The guy's got a hot tub and everything out there from what I understand. But uh, to my, that's my feeling anyways. And... Uh, you can take it what it's worth. One other thing before I sit down, uh, I hope an officer does not ticket anybody out in your handicapped parking spots for not having a handicap sticker because they're not legal parking spots unless there's a placard on the building or a post in front, the, hot, the fast taco truck could park there. Check with the state regulations. I've seen police get ostracized by a judge because they didn't know the rulings. There's supposed to be a marked handicap. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Sandra DeBille Taylor, 545 Broad Street. Um, of course, the TIFs are going to comment on. Um, mostly for the people at home, because it's very confusing. Menashe has 13 TIFs. We're probably going to have 14. Two have closed, neither one of those made any money, <laughs> or very little, and what we did have, we threw it right back into the downtown. Right now, the way the TIFs in the downtown are laid out and overlapped, and we've borrowed from them, from 3rd Street, down Racine, all the way to Anna, go over to Washington Street, it'll be out to Whitey Mill, back down over to Taco Street and up Milwaukee, and virtually everything in that boundary is in a tip. So all the, your property taxes that increased this year on your home, if you're living in that boundary, it's not that increase isn't going to your school district. It's not going to the county, the technical college, or our own services here at home. That's what the problem is with these TIFs. When the mayor ran for election, the only TIF he was gonna support was a new grocery store. 
Well, that came and went. We are not going to live long enough to see these TIFs close. And my problem is, not so much even if there was a project, but uh, what you were all stating earlier with the one, with the former bond building, when the tower was built, we were told 700 people are gonna be in the downtown. When you moved into this building with the school district, it was gonna be so busy with all these conventions and all these teachers coming here, the downtown was gonna be mobbed. Nothing has happened. We have heard story when the marina was built, it was gonna be a draw. We keep, I can't imagine how many millions of dollars we've invested in the downtown. I want it to succeed, but the problem with a lot of these is that, well, and what we're doing now with the chicken and the egg, we're comparing ourselves to Appleton and Ena. They are now building housing because they already have corporate headquarters, they have hotels, they have banquet facilities, they have performing arts center, they have convention center, they have all these amenities that people want, are being drawn to, and that's why people are wanna move there. We don't have that. We have Parker Johns, Weathervane, and Jitters. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> and the discerning part about this whole thing is that it's all the things that you aren't even realizing what's being thrown in this tip. The kitchen sink, and why it's being done that way, whether it's a trail, or a flower pot, or a park bench, or a street light, or another $200,000 for bridge amenities on top of the 500,000 we already allocated is because as long as it's written in there somewhere, it doesn't have to come back to the council. Staff can just spend the money. They don't have to come back. That's not true. It's ridiculous. I said it before, the council has lost control. I'll say it again. You have lost control. Staff and the mayor are running the show. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Seeing no one else, I'll accept a motion to adjourn.